and in this video I'm going to show you what you can expect on your first flight in a small airplane. So if you're ready, let's go flying. One of the first things you'll notice when we open the doors is the dual controls, a duplicate set of flight controls for each of the front seats. Now some airplanes have a yoke-shaped control wheel, and some have joysticks in the center of the seat, and some have joysticks that come in from the side. You may see these and ask yourself, if I sit in the front seat, am I supposed to help fly the plane? Well, you maybe can if you want, but the reason almost all airplanes have dual controls is so that the airplane can be flown from either seat. This makes a perfect setting for flight instruction, in which the instructor or the student can fly the plane, providing they're both sitting in the front seats. But try to keep your hands off the controls and your feet off the pedals. You'll also notice that the cabin of the airplane, or the cockpit, if you really need to call it that, is pretty narrow, much more so than even a small car. Airplanes are designed to be as narrow as possible to displace the smallest practical amount of air. So consider elbow room as something you have to give up to experience the joy of flight in a small airplane. The seat belts in an airplane work exactly like the ones in the car you drove to the airport, although some older airplanes may require separate buckling of the lap belt and the shoulder harness, and still others may have a four or five point safety harness. Your pilot will show you how to fasten your seat belt. In fact, federal regulations require airplane passengers to be briefed in seat belt use. Every flight begins with a pre-flight inspection, in which the pilot examines the airplane from propeller to tail. Part of this inspection may include drawing a fuel sample from the wing tanks, which ensures a contaminant-free fuel supply. Commercial pilots perform pre-flight inspections, too. You may observe your pilot using checklists and wonder, doesn't he know what he's doing? Well, flying an airplane is a complex task involving many steps. Neglecting any one of these steps may compromise the safety of the flight. So just to make sure, pilots use checklists to ensure nothing has been forgotten. You may be able to help the pilot by reading the checklists. In order to maneuver the airplane into a position where the propeller blast won't damage other airplanes when you start the engine, it's usually necessary to move the airplane manually on the ground. To do this, you put a tow bar on the front wheel in order to steer, and you use people power to push or pull the airplane. You may be asked to help. After startup and before takeoff, the pilot performs a run-up. During this procedure, the engine is revved up while the plane is held still with the brakes. The purpose of the run-up is to make sure the engine, control systems, and electronics are working properly, and that the propellers aren't missing, as with this Metroliner, or part of the tail isn't missing, as with this Piaggio. If you've ever flown on a commercial jetliner, you probably notice that the airplane tilts or banks when it turns. This is even more noticeable in a small airplane because you can see out the front window. If the sight of the world tipping disturbs you, you can close your eyes when the airplane is turning. The effect is purely visual. Because a small airplane has a much, much smaller mass than a big old jet airliner, little gusts of wind acting on the airplane make the ride a little bumpier than on a big passenger jet. If you start to feel uncomfortable, tell your pilot as soon as possible. There may be some adjustments to the flight plan that might smooth out the ride, or it may be necessary to turn around and land. But in general, try to relax, trust the pilot and the airplane, and enjoy the magic of flight. You will grin like a child.